Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So this episode, we're going to complete the thread cutting on the collet chucks. So that's an M50 by 1.5 pitch thread. And previously, we've only roughed this thread out down to somewhere near three quarters of its required diameter. So we go through how to chase the thread, pick up. So we're cutting, um, cutting the thread in the right position. Then we're going to move on to the taper, setting up for the taper to suit the ER40 collets. So the procedure we're going to use for the taper, we're going to make a plug gauge, which is spot on ER40 taper. And we'll use that to check our tapers. The reason we're going down the avenue of a plug gauge is I'm not a believer of using the collet as a guide to check a taper. Um, you'll find there'll be different tolerances between different collets. These are quite a good collet, these ones, these are uh, Jacob's collets, so they're not cheap crap collets. But the problem is, I mean, you could put a, a neat fitting pin gauge in there to help hold the collet um, round. The thing is, if you get one of the fingers that's a slight bit prouder than the others, just the way the collet's been sprung just through general use, it's going to give you a misreading when you go to blue up and check your taper. So that's why we're going to make a proper plug gauge to the proper taper and that's how we're going to do it. So over to the lathe and we'll uh, knock these threads out first and then we'll move on to setting up for the taper. Now the process we're going to use to pick up on our thread is we've pre-cut the thread down to three quarter depth when we're roughing the part out. So we're cutting a one point, uh, M50 by 1.5 pitch thread. So once our lead screw, our half nuts are engaged into the lead screw, now on number one on the thread dial, just, you can use any number, I use number one because it's easy for me to remember. So our lathe's turning slowly, our half nuts are engaged and our tool's travelling along. What I do then is adjust the compound slide so we have the compound parallel with our work. And slowly feed the tool in while advancing the compound slide until I'm cutting to full depth and I can see chips coming off both sides of the tool and the, and the very nose radius of the tool. So then I don't touch the compound slide. So we, by then we're at the end of the thread, we pull out and repeat the process and start cutting the thread. Now it takes three or four goes to get this in the exact position. Now if you go too far, you've got to pull out and start again. You cannot back the compound off because you'll end up with your compound in a position where you're sitting in the middle of backlash. So you might think you're in the right spot, but believe me, your tool will move and it will de-pitch. We'll start cutting uh, more on the... Um, well, it'll probably start cutting more on this side. So you only ever move, advance the, the compound slide to pick up on the thread. This is for a right-hand thread. If it was a left-hand thread, you're going in the other direction, well, you'd, you'd go the other way. So. So that's the basic um, principle on how you pick up to chase a thread. Because we are chasing a thread. We're chasing this existing thread. So yeah, just basically the tool goes along and we advance our compound to get the right position. So I'll swing you around the lathe and we'll show you.
Okay. Okay, back on with our arbors, the grinding of the ER40 bores. So we're set up in the lathe, we're all dialed in, running true. And we've cleaned all the scale out of the um, bore from the heat treatment. So that, um, we clean that out so it doesn't clog up the grinding wheel. So all we'll do now is we'll dress the wheel cover up our lathe and take a trial cut. So what the plan is, we'll, we'll take a dressing cut across the entire face of the wheel and then we're going to relieve the back section of the wheel. So we're only grinding on the first section of the wheel as the spindle and this setup in the tool post grinder is not really rigid enough to grind over the full face of this wheel. So hence we relieve that. So let's crank it up. Okay, that looks okay. You may have noticed me run this bit of wood over the wheel at the end. Um, that's something I picked up off uh, Steve Barton, Solid Rock Machines. And the purpose of that is, if there's any of the grit that's still left in the wheel and hasn't quite released after the dressing, Sometimes you'll get a bit of grit that's just held in by a little wee bit of bonding and this running across with the wood is enough to flick that out. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll put the dresser in the other position and we'll just take a, a very slight cut along the front of the wheel. Righty ho, we're ready to take a trial cut. So we've all properly covered up. So we'll take a trial cut through and see how we're looking and then we'll um, put the coolant in.
grind's looking nice. Very happy with the grind. This is a 46 grit wheel that we are using. We just have to go a little bit further to get a full clean up at the front. So we'll keep going. Well, that's looking quite good. We might uh, do a bit of a trial check of the, our taper. We'll blow it up with the uh, plug gauge and we'll see how we're travelling. Need a bit of bearing blue on our plug gauge. We'll pop it and we've still got a way to go. We're at the right size when the end of the plug gauge is flush with the end of the arbor, the cutter. There's a little bit of rock in that, so we may have to do a slight taper adjustment. Yeah, see we're not contacting, we're only contacting halfway down the taper. So, we've got to increase if we increase our taper on the compound slide so we're not getting contact here but we are here so we'll increase our angle around and that should give us a bit more contact it's only a little bit but we'll do it so we gave our compound a, a very slight very minute adjustment we took a, a test grind, so we're coming up with the opposite now, so we've got no contact for this area here, and we've got full contact down here. So we've gone too far, so we're just going to go back and split the difference between where we are now and where we were. So you would have seen when I've done other tapers, I have an indicator stylus on the compound slide, and that allows me to know my relative movement. So what I did, I moved the compound two thou around. So I'll bump it around one thou back the other way and that should split the difference and should put us in a good position then on our taper. Okay, from time to time you'll see me just rest my finger on the spindle while the grind is running. And I'm just checking to make sure we've got absolutely no vibration happening there. If we do start to get vibration then it's time to dress the wheel. Okay, we'll clean this out and give it a, a bit of a blue test.
Okay. That's looking good. Get a nice coverage all the way along there. I think we'll leave it at that. As far as depth goes, yeah we're pretty well there for depth. We could take another couple of cuts just to bring it spot on but that little bit's not actually not that critical in the depth. I'd sooner leave it at that while the wheel is still in good condition. So I think we'll let this one go. Good result. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to a conclusion now for all of this uh, R8 tooling. It's been quite an interesting series to, to do, to go through the whole process. So, the R8 to the boring head one, we actually used that the other day, and that worked very well. The stub arbor, we are yet to, to use. The small face mill we will be using in the job that we're doing in the bridge port at the moment. And of course we have the one here that we couldn't grind the R8 shank on. So this is the one we're going to chop that off and mount it on a base plate so we can use it either in the milling machine, the lathe or the tool and cutter grinder. As for the R8, uh, sorry the ER part came out well, no problems there. So this will be repurposed. The two arbors that we made up for taking, these will take either a slitting saw or like a, a smallish um, cutter, such as like a, a gear tooth cutter, a small, you know, like a small wheel cutter. So all we have to do with these is just make up the, the clamping arrangement. As I said, these are going to have the drawbar will go through these and pull up on the clamp. That way we can have a low profile um, clamping system right next to the cutter without a lot of unnecessary um, parts to clamp. And these are both keyed inside as well, internally. So we'll finish that off and we'll, we'll, we'll set a job up so we can get some use and show you how these ones work. Our ER40 collet chucks, they come out really well, quite surprised me. <laughs> All we have to do with these, I have already used one of them already, this big one here. What I want to do is put these all back in the bridge port and we'll just do a bit of a run out test on them to see how we're going for run out in case we have to do any corrections. And hopefully they'll be alright. But Now I'd like to, I would have liked to have done that now but I have this other job here set up in the bridge port. I've got a few plates that I have to put weld preps on and machine the edges on for our or for another up and coming project. So I need to get the ball rolling on that one. So I think we'll um, wrap this one up for now. So thanks for sticking around and uh, hopefully we'll learn something from this. <laughs> so have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.